As an example, the intrinsic, or those built-in data types, they're actually value types. Now, a value type basically is a type in which the data is stored on the stack. So the stack, that's that area process memory where the actual variable or call data is stored. The garbage collection actually happens after the stack frame, usually defined by the function that defines the, the scope of the call. After that function ends, that's usually when the garbage collection for stack data takes place. So that means that value types are designed to be very efficiently stored and very efficiently destroyed. On the other hand, objects are basically reference types. So reference types, rather than being allocated on the stack, they're allocated on the heap. In other words, we have references that point over to those objects that are actually sitting on the heap. Now with this in mind, you can have multiple references that refer to the same physical object in the heap. So I could have more than one reference, if you will, variable, if you like, uh, that points to the same object. When you allocate an element on the heap, therefore, a return address is basically allocated to that reference. Now, the garbage is also collected basically sometime after the last reference to the object has actually been released. All value types basically derive from a single base class, the system.valuetype class. So value types can either be those built-in intrinsic data types such as float or a character or any of the other built-in types we've already discussed, or there may be user-defined value types as well, such as the enums or structs. Those are also considered value types. Because the value types actually represent elements of a class, since we're talking about that base value type class, they also have properties and methods that are associated with them. Some of the more convenient properties and methods include, for example, the getType method. The getType method is a method that we can use to return the type of that particular element. So if I have a variable, for example, called myInt, which is defined as an integer data type, then the getType method would return int as its value. We also have a property called base type that we can use to find the base type of any data type. And this is very helpful if you want to identify whether or not you're actually dealing with a value type or with a reference type. For example, if my int, which is my uh, integer data type, has a data type of int, I can find that base type by using the base type property, which returns system.value type. So this is just a very convenient way of identifying the fact that we are dealing with a value type rather than a reference type. 